Hello guys, Tom here. Welcome back to my movie channel. Thank you very much for joining me for this, my ranking of the 2021 Marvel Disney Plus series. We have had five shows come out on Disney Plus from the MCU this year, and I've enjoyed some of them and not enjoyed other ones, so I thought it'd be a good idea to give you guys my ranking of those shows for this year, and let me know in the comment section below, guys, if you've been watching all the Marvel shows, and what is your ranking of the shows in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't been here already, remember to hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell so you never miss out on my take on all things movies. Now, I will give this disclaimer that this video may contain spoilers for any and all of the shows on Disney+, Plus. so if you haven't caught up yet and you don't want to hear potential spoilers for Hawkeye or WandaVision or Loki, then why don't you just consider adding this video to your favorites or your watch later list and come back and join me once you've caught up with the MCU series. So without further ado, I'm going to get into it and go from worst to best. So in last place, I have Loki. Now I know Loki, this could be an unpopular opinion because I know there are a lot of people who got super into Loki and really adore that show. And I really loved the first two episodes, but I feel like after the first two episodes, it just fell off the wagon for me and it got too much in its own head, and it was a different kind of show, and, you know, I'm not sitting here, you know, lamenting that, oh, there wasn't all these big superhero fights or anything like that, it just, by episode three, I realized that this show wasn't really for me, and I stuck it out because I wanted to see how, how it ultimately ended, and I was very disappointed that the finale was essentially just a massive conversation just to give exposition for what had gone on in the rest of the series, and it's like, well, I just feel like they could have found a better way to give us a lot of information rather than just one episode give us all the answers just in one big conversation. I just didn't feel like that was executed properly. And I got to the point with Loki where I think it was around the episode, the third or fourth episode mark, where I just realized I'm not excited about watching the next episode of this show. And, you know, thankfully it was only six episodes, so I stuck it out, but I was really disappointed with Loki. I, I don't, I don't like the show very much at all. Loved the first two episodes, but after that, I, I really just couldn't get on board with what they were trying to do. Okay, this is going to be the most unpopular opinion of this video, and that is that the next spot on this list goes to WandaVision. Now, before you unsubscribe, hear me out. WandaVision was a show that for six and a half episodes, I was absolutely in love with. Those first six and a half episodes were bloody brilliant. They were unique. They were different. I was on board from episode one, going through the multiple eras of TV sitcoms and, you know, Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany and Katherine Hahn played off each other so well in this show. And I was really, really digging it. I just felt like by the time we got to the finale, and the finale is a good, solid episode. It really is. It is It is a good episode of Marvel TV. It really is. In its own bubble, on its own, it is a good episode. But when I look at that final episode and I, you know, attach it to the rest of the series, I just felt like, you know, you had six and a half episodes of unique brilliance, and then you just devolve into standard MCU superhero CGI fight. You know, to me, that that didn't really, the two things didn't really mesh well. And I, I understand because it's the MCU and it's Marvel, so there sort of has to be contractually, there has to be a fight, I guess. But I think there were some better ways to approach that finale, mainly because I didn't feel like you needed Agatha in that show at all. To me, Wanda is is her own antagonist in that show. And so you didn't really need Agatha as far as I was concerned. I was, you know, when people started speculating early on the show that Agatha was going to be in it, I was like, no, I don't think so because you don't need it because Wanda is both the protagonist and the antagonist in this show. And the finale has some great things about it. I'm not knocking the finale as an episode on its own, but I just felt like it doesn't it doesn't live up to the previous six and a half episodes. It just doesn't. At least for me, you may feel differently and that's perfectly okay. Next up is Falcon and Winter Soldier. This was a series that I overall very much enjoyed. I have some minor criticisms along the way. One of the big criticisms that I can levy against all the MCU Disney Plus shows is that the, the pacing of their stories, it's not very well done. And you feel like a lot of the time with these, especially with the six episode arcs, you feel like they're often in the last episode or two 
rushing to get to where they need to be because they've spent the previous five episodes doing some random stuff. And I felt the same thing with Falcon and Winter Soldier. And especially, like, with Falcon and Winter Soldier, I almost feel like it just should have been a movie. Like, they just should have made it as a movie, structured it as a movie, written it as a movie, and then just put it on Disney Plus as a straight-to-streaming movie. That's what HBO Max is going to do with their upcoming Batgirl movie. You know, uh, Amazon Prime do this, Netflix does it. Just make it as a movie. But I did enjoy this series overall. I really did. And I'm super interested to see where we see now Captain America and the Winter Soldier pop up next. Okay, in the second spot, this is going to give away the first spot, but whatever. In the second spot, I do have Hawkeye. Hawkeye was a series that I enjoyed quite a lot. Um, it does have, you know, it's it's pacing problems like the rest of the MCU shows do or have done up until this point. You know, there's a lot of random stuff in Hawkeye that I wasn't a big fan of that I didn't felt feel you know, contributed to the overall narrative of the show. I'm not a big fan of this Echo character. Like, I know they're going to do a whole show with Echo. And honestly, I, I couldn't give two shits about this character. I, I really couldn't. And I just, I don't know how you build a whole show around that character. But man, Haley Steinfeld, I love her as Kate Bishop. She was fantastic. I cannot wait to see more of that character. I really like what they did with Clint Barton and Yelena. I love that resolution on that, you know, on the ice in the finale. That was really good. Their conversation and, you know, spoilers for the finale if you haven't seen it. But, you know, when when they're, when Yelena's confronting Clint... And I thought, this is the moment. How is he going to try and explain to her that he didn't kill Natasha? She sacrificed herself. Like, how how does anyone supposed to explain that to someone who wasn't there? Oh, we're on the planet Vormir to get a magic stone. And one of us had to die in order to get it because the big red floating guy told us that's how it worked. Like, how do you explain that to somebody? And I love the way he finally got through to her was to do the Black Widow whistle, the whistle that, you know, Natasha and Yelena did in the movie Black Widow, which again, I didn't like. I love that device that they used for how does Clint get through to Yelena, who is essentially, at that point, she's just all about revenge. She's consumed with it, and that is what got through to her. I thought that was a beautiful moment in the finale. Now, obviously, a lot of people are going to be talking about, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio's back as Kingpin and, and all that stuff, and he's very good as Kingpin, you know, but listen, I... I was not a big fan of the Netflix series, to be honest with you. I like the first season of Jessica Jones. I do love Charlie Cox's Daredevil, but, you know, the Netflix series weren't really my thing, and so I never really had the chance to fall in love with Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. Um, let's hope he comes back, because it'd be a shame if they just killed him in the finale and he's only in the show for one episode, but I really did enjoy Hawkeye overall. Okay, last but not least, in first place, my favorite MCU Disney Plus show for 2021 has to be What If. What If was a series that when they first said they were doing it, and when I saw the trailer, I'm like, you know what? I, this animated What If thing, I don't really care about it. Uh, I'll probably just skip it, right? It was one of those shows. I had zero interest in it. And it's always the things you have no interest in that end up being some of your favorite things. And so I thought, you know, it dropped. I'll check out the first episode. I watched the Captain Carter episode. I thought, that was a really solid episode. Then I watched episode two. Liked it even more. Episode three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like, I fell in love with What If. And by the end, by that finale with Guardians of the Multiverse and Ultron and, and all this stuff, I was digging the shit out of What If. I really loved that show. And I, you know, I know it's kind of an unpopular thing to say because, you know, there are people that like the show, but I don't know of anyone that really loves the show the way I did. I really got into What If, and it's a show that I can't wait for the second season. I mean, come on, they did a whole Marvel Zombies episode, and they're going to do a whole Marvel Zombies series, by the way. And that was one of my favorite episodes of that show, so I'm super excited that's getting turned into its own spinoff. So anyway, guys, that is my ranking of the MCU Disney Plus series for 2021. Once again, make sure you jump down in the comment section below and let me know how you would rank the series so far. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell so you never miss out on my take on all things movies. My name is Tom, and I will see you guys next time.